China's been warned about its debt levels many, many times. What's so special about this warning from the IMF? Well, I think the IMF has, in consultation with the Chinese government, issued this report. So in one sense, it's looked thoroughly at the regulatory structure, as well as probably some more of the data that, say, um, other banks or others may not have access to. And their conclusion is China's debt over the last few years has essentially grown too quickly. So one of the things the IMF said is that at this level of corporate debt, at this level of amount of credit to GDP, there's a high probability of financial distress based on their experience of looking at countries around the world. And I think that's why this particular warning uh, should be heeded. I mean, a lot of people, you know, the, the, the dreaded words are always, this time it's different. Is there a mm. case for saying that China is different simply because it is still experiencing such explosive growth? Yes, and I think um, for, with a, with a big caveat, of course, is that across countries, when debt levels get to be 160% of GDP, that's corporate debt in China, the banking system is already the largest in the world, there are going to be elements of risk which is common across countries. However, those within China who are more sanguine about um, the growth of credit would point to the fact that, especially on the consumer side, it's starting at very low levels because yeah. China is still transitioning from a centrally planned economy and you're only now, and it's quite slow, getting commercial banks into the system. However, what is unique about China, but it's worrying, is that it also has a very large shadow banking system because of the state domination yeah. of the banking system from its communist uh, centrally planned economy era. And that special trait of China actually increases the risk of a crisis because we just don't know enough about shadow banking. Absolutely. But I mean, you just mentioned the Communist Party. They've just had a Congress in which they more or less said, we want to stop pursuing growth at all yeah. costs. Presumably the IMF is pushing it at an open door with this, isn't it? Yeah, this is why the consultation with the government is so important. So the IMF report lays out the ways in which the Chinese government is already de-emphasizing growth, strengthening micro-prudential supervision of individual banks. But where they say the Chinese system is still weak is in two main areas. One is that the regulatory system overall in China is underdeveloped because the legal system is not independent of the state. And the second area, of course, is this opaque area of shadow banking, yeah. which is actually linked to the state-owned banks. So they trace, and they actually specifically say, consumers are becoming more indebted in China because they're chasing asset price speculation. Now, that suggests that this is a trend that needs to be nipped in the bud. And the question is, does the Chinese state have the capacity to do that, given where it currently is in terms of regulation and the legal system, which a lot of people would say is not quite there up to the task, even if bits of it have improved? And very, very briefly, it also has to recapitalize some of its banks. Yes, and that's the big key question. If there was some type of financial distress or crisis, how much would it cost to recapitalize the banks? If it costs too much, that could lead China to a long period of stagnation. So we need to know the amount.